Man, uh, I guess I missed a little bit, huh? Oh, you know, brother go on vacation, uh, achieve a few, you know, goals and things like that. And, you know, all of a sudden, got a new basketball coach and, well, not yet. You know, all kind of other stuff. But y'all know one thing that ain't never changed. And it's always going to be fangs up. Yeah, baby, you know what time it is. Now let's get it started. While our HBCUs are mostly known for an academic rigor, community, they also know how to turn up. Does he have it? Yes, he does! And that might be the knockout punch. All right. Greetings and salutations. Long time no see. What's up, Demetra? Good to see you. Man, appreciate y'all stick with the brother. Had to accomplish some goals. Um, <laughs> had to get something taken care of. And uh, yeah, man, I, you know, it's also spring break. So every once in a while, got to sit back and smell the roses and enjoy some stuff. But, um, you know, if y'all know me well, you know, Hamilton is like my favorite play. And so in there... They have a uh, part where Thomas Jefferson, the character, sings that, uh, plays him, sing, sings the song, talking about what did I miss? And so, look, what did I miss? Because, you know, Bernie Mac said it best. The Negroes break. We break. And my brother was gone for a few weeks there. And, man, uh, basketball coach, not retained. Not a surprise. Uh, Ariana Grizzle is bringing in every award possible. And the baseball and softball teams are quietly, like, really good. Like, the softball team actually has a plus 500 record. Like, you know how I feel about that. A little tear to my eye. Uh, but I'm going to start by looking at the tennis team. They're in third place in the swag. So six and one in conference. 68 on the season, which they're right there. They're this close to being 500. I I'm loving this. Look, don't make me cry. Look, they, look, if you listen to ONG, you know, they kind of hit it. She might be able to get some, you know. Let's see. I don't know. But I really do wish <sighs> wish Grizzle had an extra year. What a what a coach pressure to come a year earlier. Like, I'm, look. A.D. Sykes, I'm going to give you credit. You did good there. And I ain't going to lie. I missed that 220 meeting. Um, I tried to watch it. And that must have been the Lord telling me don't watch it. <laughs> so I'm going to watch that on Saturday and catch up. And we're going to, yeah. It don't sound good. But we'll hope. Uh, but tennis is next match Saturday against Cookman. It's at home, though. So, you know, out there at Gibson Complex. She she's trying to do some stuff to it. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you about that one. Like AD says she's trying to do some stuff, and I give her some credit for that. But you know, we're gonna see. What did I miss though? That's what we're trying to see. Uh then we got a player of the week, Sarah Rakim for the tennis as well. And the season's about to end for tennis, and we're in a really good place. Like, and if you're kind of looking for me to kind of go through some of the coaching search of basketball. I got one name for you. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I, I saw the ONG strike zone last night and I was like, yeah, we're going left. <laughs> and I was gonna do a show about the basketball. And I was like, I'm like, dang, my brother's over there. Them jokers are smart. Uh, so, but we're still gonna talk about it though. We're gonna talk about football too. But then, family track, Pepsi relays Friday through Sunday, just finished the FSU relays. And they got my favorite track athlete, Kennedy, up there on the uh, on the athletic website. But, man, family track is quietly becoming, like, a solid program. Like, and pay attention to Joseph DeRozier. Uh, I'm just saying, you might want to pay attention to that kid because, uh, mm, let me make sure my curl's still straight. <laughs> His Jerry Curl's curling right. Like that guy's doing some things that you want to look at. And 
look, this baby baseball team, yeah, they are right now give me a little bit of hope. Like, what we got right now, if you look 15 minutes ago, 10 to 1. <laughs> oh, hey, yes, sorry. Look, I, I, sell, I shout easy, as my preacher man would say. Uh, but, and I love the like, the fist bump picture. Oh, you're not looking. It's okay. Yeah, Jackson State caught that whooping today. <laughs> Great A tail whipping. Uh, 10 to 1, nine innings. And if you look at the score, it was in doubt about the third inning. We had some questions. Fourth inning, but by the fifth inning, yeah. And that seventh and eighth inning, them Rattlers came on and laid a whooping on Jackson State. So, bravo, bravo, Jamie Shoup and the Rattlers look like they're fighting to try to get that second place. Look, don't give my hopes up. Don't give me hope. Y'all know how I am about that. I right, look, I even got hopeful for this basketball team at times during the season. They win one game and I'd be like, all right, we might have a shot, but we didn't. But yeah, so fresh off the presses, uh, 10 to one. Woof. Okay, guys, look, we got some home runs. Look, the Rattlers just put some wood. Hey, he, he treated them boys out for Z style. <laughs> Look, uh, celebrating over there. You know, saw the cap was doing a little something over there on the hill. But look, they, that's that's huge because Jackson State's in first place. Fame is currently in third place. So if you're a Rattler baseball fan, and I'm sorry, you're a fan of the SWAC champion family baseball team, it's a good time to be a fan. Like, and honestly, you know, I'm biased. And look, that, that other thing's going to creep in for a second. You might have two of the best baseball programs in the city, in the nation, in one city. Like, I, you know, y'all know I'm exclusively dedicated to fam you here. But across the street, they had lost a game. Like, just let, let's play what if, because the devil has enough advocates. What if? This family baseball team does well. And that team across the street continues to do well. What would happen if we had an NCAA tournament with FAMU and FSU in baseball? I can't. I, I'll be honest. I, I can't tell you if they've ever played. Like I, in my lifetime, I've never known FAMU to play FSU in baseball. What would that be if those teams played at Mike Martin Fields, especially with Jamie Shoup? Like, I'm just saying, that's a story. Like, if you're a baseball fan, especially if you're like, I'm an FSU baseball fan. I'm not going to lie. Fan you FSU, those are my teams. Like, I like the University of Kentucky as well for other stuff. I like them all sports, but fan you FSU my teams. What would this be for these two teams to get that going? Like just you know, th throw it up there, pie in the sky. I, I got my I got my yo chip. I ain't gonna throw it up there. I got an eraser. Let's just throw it up there. What what happens if FAMU and FSU were to play in the NCAA tournament in baseball? Better yet, what would happen if we got a little bit of that magic we saw last year in Gainesville from this FAMU baseball team at Mike Martin Field? That would be crazy. And I'm just saying, it would be poetic though considering 11 died this year. And if you're not an FSU fan, 11 is Mike Martin's number. What would that be? Like, that would be an amazing moment. Like, you know, get Fred Flowers to throw the first pitch. Yes, that's my cousin. I'm biased. <laughs> but get him to throw at the first pitch for that kind of game. You know, get his sister out there. You know, first FSU homecoming queen, Dobby Lee. Like, also my cousin. <laughs> but... Get those kind of people out there. Like, I'm just saying, like, that would be pretty huge. It'd be even bigger. Jamie Shoup went over there and won after how they did that, man. <laughs> you want to know the talk of trash? I'm just saying. Look, we're going to play hypotheticals while we're on baseball. If FAMU 
with Jamie Shute as a skipper were to beat Florida State and especially beat them in the NCAA tournament, God forbid we turn them out. Man, look, if my name was Jamie Shute, like I'd walk out of the stadium bucky ball naked. <laughs> I'd be showing my ASS naturally. Like, like, sir, you ain't got no clothes on. Like, hey, hey, last time I left this stadium, y'all treated me like this. <laughs> Guess what you can kiss? <laughs> I'm gone. I'm just saying, like, if, if we go, y'all know me. Look, I'll throw it out there. I, I ain't afraid to say it. Look, as much of a fan as I am, I graduated from FAMU. So the Rattlers are always first. Look, that would be poetic. And it would be something interesting to see. Is it likely? Nah, probably not. Nah, the FSU got a stick right now. <laughs> like, like uh, yeah, that, that dude they got over there. Yeah, that man wore a suck in one year. And uh, yeah, but real talk, Shoop is like literally he, he's doing so much of what he's got. And look, if we can get him a little bit of something else, just saying, you know, let's fill the conference on that. Now, softball, that lady's making some of y'all eat your words. And I and I say that in a respectful manner. I you know, it's not a, it's not attacking. Maybe softball's in first place. Just saying. Like we we named the coach, then we named the field after Coach Wiggins. And look, coach, she's out there doing the effing thing. Like, you got a first place softball team with our facilities, which look, I mean, they're not that much different when I'm in college, but they're a hell of a lot better. Like, look, thank you. Some folks doubted her. I look. I've been on the Coach P train from day one. I ain't going to lie. Now, Coach Pressure, I can't say I was day one. I was like, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to give you a chance. I'm glad I did because uh, so far, the return on investment is there. But as Demetrius said, they doubted her. They was like, yeah, she need to go. She need to get fired. I'll be honest. This is my take on Coach P right now. I think she wants to win every game. I love that she's young. The other thing I think that she's doing, I think she kind of looks and kind of walks down that street from Wiggins Field down there to more Kittles and talks to shoot. And is like, should I always use my best players in every game? And shoots like, nope. Some games you need to take that L so you can get the check. Because when you win the conference, just saying. And as Demetri pointed out, her age is the big problem. It really was. But go back, and, I, and y'all know, Cousin Kelvin pointed out last night, uh, Kelvin Rozier, ONG Strike Zone, A, in the search for a basketball coach, kind of looking for youth. Like, notice, AMU's at its best most times when we get a coach that's either very experienced or kind of youthful and has had some success because they've got that energy to build a program. Just go back. Willie Simmons. Willie Simmons is still in his 40s. Leaves our program. He comes in, what, like early 40s, late 30s? Flips that program. Like, Gillespie was older. Shoop was older. But again, both of those experienced guys came here, had done the darn thing. Same thing with Billy Joe. Experience. I mean, we're going to get to that in a minute. But their next game against BCU, and honestly, that's down here in Central Florida over in Daytona. Um, I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't going to that one. Yes. Uh, like parking at that place? Yeah, man, my car might get hit by a softball. And look, I don't know about you, but, man, look, I ain't got time for that. <laughs> look, basketball, we definitely – no offense to older guys, you're, you're not wrong. I agree, Demetri. Hey, look, you brought me right into basketball. Look, grizzle, grizzle, grizzle. Like, can we say anything else? Like, literally, you got a two-player and a half team where when you shut down grizzle, you pretty much slowed us down. That girl was amazing. Like, let's give her her flowers while she can smell them and while she can appreciate them. And I agree with one of the things that Kelvin said last night. 
we missed out on that one. The girl's last name is Grizzle. You can't do like something where we had an NIL deal with like Build a Bear Workshop or something even where you just sold like FAMU Bears with their basketball jersey on them. Just something to kind of take advantage of that kind of stuff. Like because she was a freaking baller. Like we couldn't do some young ladies nights where, you know, we gave away like full five jerseys, you know, something like that. You know, and I, I know that's asking a little bit, but just kind of thinking like that, like we didn't market that right. Like when you consider the player she was and the team she came back to, like the previous year, she was on last year's team. She was on that trash juice from last year. Like, and don't get me wrong. Look, y'all know Coach Pillow. That was my boo coach. Like, I'm a girl. But the product wasn't there. Like, much as I like her, she's cool. Like, I, I tell y'all quick, when it comes to Coach McCullum and uh, Coach Pillow, you won't get me to say a bad thing about them as a person. They were two really good people. Um, and I saw one person, one of my mentors, um, I consider him a mentor, um, he, he put up there a nice little piece about Coach McCullum saying how, you know, he kind of, he did well considering what he had, but we do have limited resources. Now, when it comes to this women's basketball team, man, the proof's going to be in the pudding because Coach P shows she can coach. Now can she recruit? And that that's a, that's a, that's a valid question. You know, that's not me trying to poke a hole in her experience, whatever. Because honestly, I'm asking the same question about Coach Colsey right now. Like, okay, Coach, can you recruit? Like, you know, and it's not a backhanded comment. It's an honest question. And uh, Jen Speed Pillow, Coach Shalon Pillow, she was the previous coach. Um, she departed early. Um, much respect to her for doing so. Um, it probably was for the betterment of the program. I think when the end of the time roll around and we look retrospectively at that time and what she inherited, what she got and what she was able to accomplish, I think her stepping down is going to be something that both FAMU fans and she look at and say it was the right move. Because I do think uh, Coach Pressure is going to turn into something serious. Like, I'm just going to be real with y'all. I, I think in about two years, Family basketball is going to be pretty solid on both sides. Because I'll be honest, for the men, y'all say what y'all want to. And look, A.D. Sykes, look, day one, first time I met you, no problems with you. I've only ever had one issue with you, um, major issue. Right. Fun and stuff, that's cultural. That's not even solely her. Some of that's just us. But the football thing, yeah, I was mad. Basketball, I trust her. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I, I love how, okay, yeah, we're getting committees going, and I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I told y'all, I ain't watched the whole 220 thing. But when I'm hearing panels and groups, and I'm hearing some of the same names that hired some of them previous coaches, and I know why some of them coaches got hired, why? Like that, that, that's why I put the little cursing emoji on the O and G last night. Why are we? Why do we have the same people that have been riding with this basketball team for 30, 40 years of suck choosing the next coach? Like the only time you I can really give you any good times in that is McCullum and the Miak and Gillespie, which. Yeah, okay. You know, you kind of, you know, if you had to fire him or not, you know, I don't know. You know, I I think you could have let him slide. I mean, you know, was he a little, you know, might have been doing some creepy things. Yeah, you know, but I'm just saying, you know, you could have let him slide. I mean, it was winning games. I mean, you know, you know, coach, coach had some habits. We was recruiting. We were winning. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, you know, Winning, winning cures everything, right? <laughs> but in this case, honestly, with the basketball program, I honestly only want one person. I'm sorry. Like, 
I'm with y'all for the Chicago State thing. But um, what's up, Tamra T? Good to see you. She threw up a what up rattler there. Look, and all y'all rattlers. But I'll be honest with y'all. Chris Wright's the only one I really want. Like, I ain't gonna even hold you. Like, I like the guy from Chicago State. I think it's a great hire. But I'd be lying to you if I really thought we're going to commit to building up a basketball program the way that I think he's going to want it. Do I think it would benefit us? Absolutely. But <laughs> I look, I don't think he's going to get the job, partially because he's white. Like, I, I think I give a, <laughs> I'm like Chris Brown and T Grizzly. I don't give a one. But I'm just going to keep it a buck. I don't think he's going to get the job partially because he's white. Like, yeah, I think do I think it's absolutely stupid? Yeah, I do. Cause last time you had a white guy, you made a tournament. <laughs> Just saying. You know, not that the white man's ice is colder, but hey, it happened. But at this point, I I I'd take him. I mean, you kind of look at some of who he follows on social media. He definitely follows some fam you folks. <laughs> Like, just saying. Um, and he's built two HBCUs up. He got HBCU experience. Like, not saying that a black coach couldn't do it. You ought to really know. I don't care. The coach could be black, white, Indian, Asian. Oh, other side of Asia, sorry. India is technically in Asia. Sorry for those I offended. I don't care what he is. I want to win. Winning is what matters. Like as long as you don't have no bad track record, bad history, I care less what you look like. I want to win because guess what? In the day, W's fix everything. Like Michigan had that dude, and that brother was up there coaching, and they were like, "We're winning games. We don't care if he's black." Jim Harbaugh leaves, and they're like, "Yeah, let's hire the black guy." Michigan State, look, that, that brother. They caught that brother on some trumped up charges. But some of that was because he was losing. Some of that was because it was real. But <laughs> Winning fixes everything. I don't care who you are. Like, we talk funny about Willie Taggart. Look, when that brother was at USF, he could do no wrong. He was winning. Like, that's the thing. We got to get to that point where we're winning. But we also got to get to the point where we're building this program up. And some of this is piss poor planning. Like, we don't really prepare for basketball. It's like a sport we have, but we could give two Fs about. Like, football, oh, Rattlers, we're passionate about football. We're passionate about the 100. But at the same point, basketball, unless we're winning, we don't care. Like, Dion talked about people being front runners, and y'all know how often I quote Prime. But as a basketball culture, we're front runners. When we're winning, we're there. When we're losing, now I'm good. Like. Yeah. Do I buy tickets? Do I not? Who cares? And that, that's, is that a problem? Absolutely. Because when you're talking about the guy from Chicago State, you're a freaking fool if you don't think he's going to try to get LeBron to come help. But you're also quite dumb if you don't think that LeBron's going to show up to some of these events and hit y'all with a little bit of that Ed Reed talk like, hey, Rattler Nation, I need y'all to show up and support my boy. Hey, Rattler Nation. Y'all want to support my boy. Yo, this thing goes left, you going to get put out there. Like, that's the double side of that coin. Like, there's two sides of this thing. Again, my poker chip. There's two sides of this. On the one side, there's a great. This guy's got the connection to LeBron. He's got the support. He's got all these things that look great on paper. But you got the other side of that coin. We don't really, as a university, fam you, we don't support basketball. We play games where we get our tails handed to us. Like, we do all these things that make it kind of hard to have a good basketball program that's really worth giving a damn about. So you're going to bring this guy from a program that's really built for him to walk in and take over to something where he's like, reset. This guy's got to press reset. He got to fix this program from the ground up. And I don't think, and again, Brian pointed out, it's a, it's a Division two, maybe Division three program 
that's just labeled as Division One basketball wise. Like we're not that. So it's hard for me to look and just say that, hey, this guy's got all these connections, but not look at the other side of this and realize that we don't fund basketball properly and we really don't care about it. What's up, Mr. Campbell? Good to see you, man. Look, y'all know Mr. Campbell sells the best hair care products out there. Go support that brother, man. I was also over there on the channel with Scotty, man. Do you do his thing, man? But real talk, AMU basketball, if you're not going to commit the right way, don't play with it. Get you somebody that's used to building from the ground up. A lot of the problem we have in our basketball hires, one, is nepotism. Somebody's cousin, somebody knows somebody, that knows somebody, that knows somebody about it. Like, that's half, how, that's half the way some of these coaches got these jobs. Some of these guys, it's their first time ever being a head coach. They've been an assistant, and they're like 50. What the heck? Why are we doing this to ourselves? This guy's never been a head coach. He's never really coached at HBCU. And all of a sudden, he's going to come from a school like Oregon, Arizona, Florida State, North Carolina, NC State, and come to FAMU. What the what? The what? And you're surprised you're losing? You're supposed to lose. It's like... I drive a Nissan. Okay, that's cool. But if you, if I get a Mercedes tomorrow for my Nissan and I got to go back to Nissan, this could be a little shock. You're going to be like, God, dog, I was in the lap of luxury and I'm back in this. Don't get me wrong, I love my Nissan. I probably never leave him. But you got this person that has more facilities, more commitments, and a better program. And you're talking about scaling all that back to where now they're essentially grassroots. Give me somebody who's used to that. That's why I look. Give me Chris Wright or somebody like him. You know. And look, I love, I love this, man. And Joyce just announced head coach of Duquesne. Yep. <laughs> that's how you do it. You know, hire somebody that's already on staff. I digress. <laughs> and I think we do need to be optimistic about the hire. Again, I'm not being pessimistic about AD Sykes. I actually, basketball-wise, I trust her hire. Um, now, bowling, yeah, I didn't like that. But again, nobody cares about that like me. It's cool. Um, now, football-wise, look, we got a little bit of news. We got a little bit of news. Y'all know I don't hold y'all forever. Spring game weekend. And I like this. And I talked to Coach Colsey today. I shed a little light about that. Um, look, you ain't wrong, Will. We probably ain't the only ones, but we should be the first ones. I tell you who follows the FQ Fam you Twitter page, Coach Wright. Uh, <laughs> but spring game weekend, you got a championship ring reception, coffee with Colsey, which that was fun. If y'all want the full interview, catch round one with St. Clair Moraine on Hallelujah 95. We had a good conversation with Coach Cozy, Coach Cozy uh, in the spring game inventory sale. I want to know what they're selling. I, I want to know, do they still got them smoked out jerseys? Because I ain't going to lie. The boys is hard. If somebody can find a smoked out number seven jersey, look, I'm just saying. But some of mm, – mm. okay, let me say it. This is some of the stuff we've been asking for. How many years we've been saying – auction off some of the old stuff, like some of the old basketball jerseys, because that jersey and that jersey don't have the design. Like, y'all know how when you look at the FAMU game jerseys, they got that little design. And the jerseys you get from Nike ain't got that. The, the little, you know, I got those inhibit. But still, they don't have that extra in them. You know, for us nerds, give us that. You know, and look, there you go. They are selling old and surplus jerseys. That's what I'm saying. I don't even lie to you. Look, I would sell some of the old pants. Look, I'll hawk off. I'll hawk everything. Everything that ain't new. Look, hey, get, get me some old game used footballs. Hey, coach, we can't really use these no more. Sell them. Look, I'm just saying. Look, ain't no point in keeping that junk around. No way. It ain't going to do nothing but collect dust. And you're going to pay storage for it. Like, sell old merchandise like it just makes sense 
Like, because you got fans and alumni like me that will buy it. Like, look, y'all can't see back there. I got another fan you blanket right now. Look, there you go. You ain't got one of them. <laughs> I hit y'all with a whole Willie Simmonsism. You ain't got these. Look, but for real, like, sell that kind of stuff because you got people like me. We get jazzed about that. <laughs> nah, I ain't gonna lie. You ain't wrong about that. But I don't know. That was a Nike jersey. The gray one, that was a Nike jersey. But yeah, them Russells, yeah, them boys is beat. And the worst was them two-tone pants. Oh, man. Oh, them boys is ugly. <laughs> one side was orange. Other side was green. Like, what the heck are you coming or going? Like, I know the little song, cream on the inside, clean outside, ice cream, ice cream paint job. But come on, man. You had to do all that. That was too much. <laughs> like, it just was. Like, but on the other side, man, look. Your favorite kappa is up here. Look at him. That boy hit a smooth shimmy, too. Uh, so, spring game is $15, April 13th, 4 p.m. And y'all see the, y'all see him up there. He ain't got his cane with him this time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like Kendall. Kendall's cool, man. I ain't gonna lie. He's like really cool dude. But real talk. Look, $15 for the spring game. And in talking to Coach Colsey today, we asked some questions. Look, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Um, but he was saying the game was purposely at 4 o'clock so that the fans would go to the softball game and the baseball game. And that was one of the things I think the other year we didn't have. We had, like, the spring game going the same time as the baseball game. It was just like, what the heck? I like that. Granted, poor Josh. <laughs> but, hey, Josh, I don't know if I'm make it that day. I ain't going to lie to you. Um, down here in Orlando, we do have an event. Um, look, let me see if I can find it right fast. Yeah, I do know I run the NA page for <laughs> For the Florida region on Twitter. So I ain't even lie to y'all. I'm gonna keep that a whole y'all know I don't lie to y'all about it, most things. I mean, I tell you everything I can tell you, but I tell you, I tell you enough so that you know, yeah, man. Uh golf tournament, blah, blah, blah. One Tampa Bay. We'll talk about that. Uh, they having a picnic down here in Orlando. There we go. Chapter appreciation day at the park. It's gonna be in Apopka, Florida. Let me pull it up so y'all can see it. And then, yeah, I definitely – I didn't make the flyer this time. But they did a good job. April 13th, 1 to 5, free food, free drinks, free entry, music, games, Magnolia Park. It's in Apopka, Florida. So if you're familiar with um, Orlando, Central Florida area, Apopka is north, so right by Lake Apopka. So, and Okoye High School, where Kendall went to school. So look at that. Like literally down the road from Kendall Bowlers High School. Um, which is a Koei High School, so which is a bike ride away from my house. Um, but yeah, so if you are in the area, Central Florida area, we're there. Um, I'll probably be there. So, and we're, we're trying to do a little something, something you know. Get to D. <laughs> Try to do a little something with uh, OG and some more folks, but uh, uh, HBC game day. We're going to try to see if we can get that, have that come to fruition. But along with that, man, Look, Central Florida, y'all got it. But look, the Miami Dade Rattlers, so Dade. Look, South Dade, I ain't gonna lie. High key, y'all jokers got a thing going. They got Coach Cozy coming down there. And Coach Cozy just joined the NAA, if you missed it. Um, I, I learned, thank you, um, VP Wilman, William Human, um, AD Sykes. Is actually a member of the National Alumni Association. Man, as y'all talk about that lady, she NAA. But uh, Cozy's got coming up with a game plan, uh, you know, register. I believe there's a nominal fee. But April 24, 6 p.m., down there, South Dade, it does say reserve tables are available. Meet and greet with Coach Cozy. He's shaking babies, or shaking hands, kissing babies. Shaking babies is horrible. Uh, <laughs> but he's doing a tour. And he was like very transparent about that in talking to him. He was like, that's just part of the job. It's what you're supposed to do. Let's go. That's what you're supposed to do. 
And you know what? Now that we like the basketball coach, put her ass out there too. Like, good job. Now, A.D. Sykes, Colsey, pressure, put them together. There you go. Send them on a tour. I don't mind you. You're cool with me. But some of the other folks, they ain't going to never forget you, bro. It's okay. You know, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. They don't like you. They don't like you two fingers. But at the same point, you can't show them the two fingers in public. Just let your staff do it. But I'm just saying, that's what it is. When baseball season's over, get Coach Shoop. Get Coach P, the softball coach. Get all those four coaches. You know, get the tennis coach. Uh, volleyball coach, pretty much all your coaches with rings, have them go on the strike tour and tell your people you need money. Look, Tamara T, package them together. Make them earn their keep. Because <laughs> they're winning championships. They're independently asking us to raise funds. Send them on a strike tour to the different cities, just like hit up Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa. Coach Cozy already got Miami by his dang gum self. Like, when the summer comes, send them on a tour. All four coaches. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> hit Will about them pants. They did hurt your eyes. The best thing about them ugly pants is Leroy Van. He made them things almost look good. Now, on the, continuing on the football side, um, the transfer portal, whoo. Man, it's, 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 it's getting this. General Hunt, he's got multiple G5 offers. Um, I expect him to go. Uh, Sharif Say got an offer from Sam Houston State. They also offer Gentle Hunt. Um, and then Kareem Burke. I was high on him coming in. He intends to enter the transfer portal per his social media. He intends to enter on April 15th. So, yeah, man. Look, there you go. She's she already has some cities playing. Is she showing up? <laughs> I'm petty. I'm petty, but I'm honest. <laughs> like, and I'll be honest, I have no problem with Amy Sykes. I just know some of y'all hate that lady. Like, some of y'all, that lady can walk in right now. Ugh. Here she come with them gold shoes again. Like, yeah, yo. Here she come with another raffle. Oh, I can't stand that lady. <laughs> I am sick of these freaking raffles. Um, but look, what's the good side of town that is not heavily populated for students? You talking about Tallahassee? Sheesh. North side, but can you afford it? Do they want to drive that far? But yeah, those three have already said they're pretty much in the portal. And in talking to Coach Colsey today, He's straight up. And I ain't gonna lie, he kind of hit me with the, hey, Keith, next time you got to give me some harder questions. I'm like, oh, yes. Okay. I was just, I was trying to slide on in there, you know, earn your trust. But hey, I got it now. I'm coming with some more. Uh, and I know what questions I can't ask. But one of the things he said about the transfer players, hey, if, if a kid's in the portal, I'm assuming you're gone. They, you know, he said they're very transparent with him. Some of the students are saying they want the experience of going to, a program with more with more stuff. Like, let, let's just keep it a beat. Like, some of these players, they want to do more with more, as Kofi would say. Right, Kofi? Do more with more. And some of these players are just not happy. <laughs> like, he said that in a very nice way, but he kept it real. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I like, I like Kofi. I already, that's my dude. I like him. And then he, he said some of them are have aspirations of going power five. So it's interesting to hear him shed light on that and just be so transparent about that because he's like, yo, if they want to go, they can go. But we are recruiting to replace them. And I was like, oh, shoot. Okay, I know you can't tell me you're recruiting. That's against the rules. But, um, yeah, man, <laughs> she's going to – you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And to be honest, major programs do raffles. Like here in Orlando, every Orlando Magic game, they do a raffle. Like I, I'm not going to sit up here and act like it's Bush League. You go to Orlando Magic game, I think they play Friday. 
the Raptors or the Clippers. You go to that Clippers game, they're going to do a raffle. So it's some of this is tongue in cheek, but some of this is also the fact that we haven't seen the other fundraising pieces. But I did appreciate how um, look, how we look. I'm gonna go back and watch that 220 because I already knew some of that money she messed up, or that she some of the situations she got into was not all her fault. Yeah, and look, there we go. They want more resources. Exactly. Give me more options. We did get new coach, new coaches. Um, Marcus Wyndham is recruiting coordinator. And I asked about that. I was like, so, you know, Riz was it. Like, he was a recruiting coordinator. And Cozy's like, I got a different philosophy. And I'm like, oh, okay. And, you know, for me, I'm one of those people, I like to feel you out. Like, I like to learn kind of how, how you are, how I can approach you. Because, you know, I'm not one of those people. I'm not, I'm jokey, jokey. But I'm also like serious at the same time. Like, I don't pull practical jokes. I don't say stuff to offend you. Um, not on purpose. Uh, but with Cozy, man, like, and I'm with JT. At first, I was like, man, that's double duties. Cause it, I was like, so he's a running back coach, run game coordinator, and over recruiting. Mm, nah, bro, I ain't feeling that. But Cozy came back with, I don't really want him being the sole person recruiting. And I was like, oh, well, what is this you say, sir? And he went on to explain that essentially multiple coaches are going to assist with recruiting. And so from what I was able to surmise, and this is me, reckless, and inferring that these position coaches are going to be a lot more involved in who they recruit than some of the previous ones were, where they were involved in who they recruited. They actively recruited. I mean, Smitty Rock was on on the road. Like, Henry's going on the road. All the position coaches went on the road and recruited. But you had the one guy who was solely focused on recruiting. And I thought that was an edge that we had. But we also got those kind of coaches' assistants that are, you know, GAs that are kind of coming in that role a little bit too. And I'm wondering how that's going to play out. So I had that same problem, JT, because I didn't like the double duties. But Cozy went on, and it's been about two hours now since we uh, St. Clair. And again, if you want to catch the full interview, go check out round one on Hallelujah 95 with St. Clair Moraine and myself. Um, made my made my return at the high 80s. Had to go accomplish some things, uh, take care of some business. But you can see where Cozy's got his own mind, and I appreciate that. He also mentioned, for those of y'all asking about a quarterback coach, hopefully, look, Ma, if Dad is watching, tell Pops, yes, Cozy has a quarterback coach. No, he doesn't have the name for him. So my dad's going to call me. Probably surprised he hadn't called me right now to say who's the quarterback coach. Because my dad's good for calling in the middle of the show. <laughs> but, yes, there's a quarterback coach. Um, there's a guy that he feels like we're really going to like. He actually said, you're really going to like him. There's a quarterback coach, but because of um, regulations and blah, 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 the state of Florida, he couldn't say who the person's name was yet. I'm wondering, is it Doc Gamble? But I don't know. Uh, but he also hinted and he talked about special teams and how they're working on special teams consistently. So that was pretty cool, man. Like, I'm just saying. And let's see, Demetria. Uh, I hope we're looking for more resources. They don't get stuck in the portal. I think Geno, right. I agree. And so far we are like, because we did get a couple commitments, like, or offers, sorry, one commitment, Marquez Bell, the receiver. And I'm wondering if that kind of what happened with, you know, Burke a little bit. We got, you know, we took in a good amount of receivers. Um, and, Park got underutilized. I'll say that. Uh, but the receiving core was deep, and we definitely favored the upperclassmen. But we gave some offers out. And we're going to talk more about the offers on Sunday. But uh, Xavier ben Barnett, Braylon Charles, Dorian Collier, and Braylon Harris, all names that have been offered by Florida Indian University. We're going to do a little graphics for uh, them on the Fangs Up page. Probably get that going on Saturday, you know. 
uh, get back in this in the, in the vibe of things. And but it was pretty cool. Like I'm not gonna lie to y'all. In talking to Coach Cozy today, you could definitely see where he's still out there on the recruiting trail. He's still out there looking, uh, and he's got the kids on the schedule. Like they're still gonna practice in the mornings. Very similar to what you saw at Willie Simmons. You practice in the mornings, then you go about your school day. And I asked him, like, you know, about that student athlete balance. And I and I I did use the example of Kendall because if you if you are familiar, Alpha Z is having that one year celebration for uh, that line last year of cross it over. And so I was like, okay, cool, cool, cool. But and you see Kendall's on a lot of her stuff. How do you kind of get the players to do that student life balance because part of the problem we've had in the past is there wasn't a lot of balance that's part of what the apa apr scores were telling us the student athlete balance was off and we saw we were seeing and we've seen within the simmons era there was a flip where okay the student became more important and really kind of got back to being something that was there because for a while it wasn't like we just saying and Ashley said oh she met one of the new coaches uh last week I think safety's coach okay okay and this interview it's on hallelujah 95 you can download the app uh but it's round one with St. Clair Moraine uh he does it every week and uh, I actually get to join him so you know get to be his co-host so and what's what's the rhythm and energy as far as spring practices pretty high so talking to him he said he likes the energy so far from what i was able to take from him and um i believe that was gerald thomas from the tallahassee democrat he actually posted a video where coach Colsey was running gassers with them and whatnot but he was saying you know he's really leaning on some of the senior leadership it's one of the things st Clair asked about and shout out st Clair marine we had st Clair a few weeks ago but we had some technical difficulties about a month or two ago actually um but he asked St. Clair asked about the quarterback battle, and he was like, "Don't expect nothing. So if you come into the spring game, uh, don't get upset <laughs> when you are like it doesn't look like we have a a quarterback. Like it, it's it's not there. Like it's just it's not there. Don't get upset about it. Um, <laughs> you know it, it's just not there. So." Um, you probably won't have a quarterback until the – it's going to be right for football season, if you ask me. And, and it's, some of it is because of what we've already seen. Like, we know with Junior, when Junior is – high-level Junior is good. Low-level Junior is like WTF. And then with Richardson, he's got to learn this. He's got to learn the system. Like, and he's not very tall. And then what happens about the other quarterbacks? So that was one of the things that was, you know, inquired about. And just to kind of see where that was going. Um, we didn't ask about the running backs or receivers or anything like that. Main thing was that quarterback room because really that's going to be the lead of your team. I mean, go back to where Musa beats out McKay. Like, McKay was the heart of the team. It's just Musa was the better quarterback. Now, who was the better game manager? McKay. Who was the better, like, all-around, like, quarterback? Moose. Who won the SWAC championship and the Celebration Bowl? Moose. So, uh, who's likely to go pro? Neither. <laughs> I, I hope him. But, uh, yeah. Now, other part of that, we, did y'all see Pro Day? Like, do y'all think? Okay. I don't think any Rattler gets drafted. I'll break that third wall and say that. But I think a couple of them get a look. Just going to say that. Like, it was probably the most experienced. Yeah. Staffs matter. Like, famous backup quarterback. Like, famous quarterback room, and Will pointed out, um, DR is probably the most experienced projected starter in the conference. Snaps matter. They do. And then the other part that we're not talking about with this quarterback battle is familiar familiarity. There's some there's a receiver from FAU on this roster. Don't forget Aceon Cobb from the Great Jones High School here in Orlando, Florida, or 
neighboring Orlando. I don't live in Orlando. <laughs> if you ask my dad, I live in Orlando. But anyways, those two were on the team together. Granted, now Junior and ACL were in high school about the same time, but Junior was at Wakaba. Cobb was at Jones. But DR and Cobb were at FAU together. That's something that you you can't you can't say that that don't matter. Like as Will pointed out, snaps matter, and if snaps matter, just saying. And a, t- a tight end played with him. Like I'm just saying, part of this when I heard that yo this quarterback battle is going to be looking a little different. I ain't gonna lie. Part of me was like, Coach, what you see? What you seen that I ain't seen? Like, oh, we played at Central Michigan together. I'm just saying, a little bit of connection. Like, when I can tell you where to go versus I know you're going to be where I want you to be at, man, I can just throw the ball and hope. That can't be, under, that can't be undersold. They're going to have some chemistry. And, of course, Junior's going to have chemistry with some of the guys, but at the same point, how many of those receivers did we lose? I mean, man ago, you know, <laughs> you know, the list goes on of the receivers that Junior played with that on here compared to two of your potential top two targets play with DR. Like, it's going to be interesting to see y'all. Like, this spring game is going to be some fun. Like, we're going to see some things, and hopefully we get some stuff done. Now, the last one, last thing I'm going to do for NAA today, look. They got the one Tampa Bay, uh, one fan you stronger together in the Bay. They get, they're trying to get y'all May 30th through June 2nd. I got to ask questions, though. Like, because at one point, they said some of the coaches might be there. And at another side, you know, uh, remember when we wasn't liking A.D. Sykes, folks was asking, uh, is she going to come down to the NA event? Um, I would suggest not. If so, uh, you got to pay. Uh, you you look y'all ain't you, you don't get to piss me off for free. <laughs> I'm just you ain't gonna piss me off and bring up old stuff for free. No 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 no. It's a hundred dollars a table just for you to come and sit in my presence and me in my gold booth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, she she switched up shoes. I'm being I'm messy. I'm messy. But real talk, like. If I made these likes, I don't know if I go. I send I send the coach with rings to that, and I let them I let them talk. I let them tell the alumni what they need, and I set up something within either the Rattler Athletic Fund or something for all of them to get the money. Oh, hey, these I say she coming. Okay, all right. I, look, I appreciate that though. Like. Like, as much as I joke and as much as I chide, I like her bravery because a whole lot of folks would have been like, man, F this, I'm out. At least she's like, no, nah, I'm going to see it through. Like, that's a poem y'all folks be learning. <laughs> like, um, look, you just, oh, I went last week and I'm going, okay, okay. And look, it's going to be interesting to see y'all because my family's got a couple things going. Um, and she's gonna be present. To, okay, present the athletic plan. Okay, I like it. Look, I like that. And one of the things I, I love that because it seems like things go smoothly. We got a plan, right? Like we saw when Fam, you finally got a strategic plan, and it, it was good. And okay, stood in them ropes at two twenty to prepare for Tampa, and that's the way you do that. <laughs> well, she got to be. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to walk into that because I had a joke. Boy, you had, you had thrown a curve, a hanging curveball, and I was ready to mm. – Boy, I was going to hit a home run with that one too. I, y'all know I got jokes. I ain't got no sense. <laughs> I was like, yeah, she's going to be up there with a boyfriend somewhere. <laughs> I look, as far as I'm going to go with that one, I ain't going I ain't to go too far, man. You look, it's jokes and fun, you know. But real talk, man. Um, Look. Sunday, we're coming back here because y'all know I don't normally hold y'all no hour. Uh, we're gonna come here, we're gonna look at the recruiting. 
look at the results. We're going to look at who these athletes that were offered are and who's the kid that committed. Like, I missed a lot. Like, coach got fired. Uh, hopefully, honestly, I'm going to give you all this. This is my theory. And I know she got to do the whole search firm and committee bull jump. Man, if I'm A.D. Sykes, I'm going to pacify y'all naysayers. Hey, um, Rattler Nation, um, this is A.D. Sykes. Y'all know how she be talking. Um, and I'd be like, we are fervently looking for the next coach of FAMU men's basketball. We have a da-da-da-da-da list of coaches. I hit you with that same BS line. She hit us with the football stuff. Talking about she had 70 people apply for the job. She probably did. And I threw 70 as a random number. But I would put the job up. And I would get the search firm. I'd let them do their thing. I'd let the stakeholders start doing their thing. And I would say, we are actively working with the search committee and a search firm to find a new coach. The job is posted on the here. And I would start making that move happen. And that way, the season's off, not the season's over. Like, Nobody from the Sweet 16, Elite Eight is coming to fam you. Like, I'm sorry. If you believe that, look, there's a fresh bowl of weed on the other side of this screen for you. And I don't smoke. So you're definitely smoking some weed. Like, so just go ahead and be real with us. Like, hey, I got a search firm going. Even if you don't, make it look like you're doing something. Y'all be bull skating anyway. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, we whittling it down. Look, knock down five every couple of days. You can usually have your running lot. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're doing this, running this. Just, I would start the search now. Like, make it public. You ain't got to, you can't release the names, but make it look like you're actively doing it as you go, go into the spring game when the question comes. Yep, we're looking for a coach. We're just making sure we do our due diligence. We're trying to make sure we do this the right way. We want to include Rattler Nation. We want to include our stakeholders. I've contacted National Alumni Association, the F Club, the Boosters, all that bulls y'all want to hear. Oh, oh man, boy, I'd I'd have it in a glass for you. Y'all be over there like, oh man, fresh, fresh BS. That man keeps us on the on a rope. And I would just keep reeling you in. I reel you in for like a good month or two, knowing full and freaking well. I know who I want to hire. I get the search firm a list of five to seven coaches. Y'all pick these five to seven, send that to the stakeholders, five to seven, and I would hire the dude from uh, Langston. <laughs> That's just Keith. I'm just being real with you. Like, honestly, if it was me, that white man would be at FAMU tomorrow. <laughs> I, I would have put the job out there. About three days ago, well, was, honestly, when I, the day after I fired McCullum, I'd have had that job out there. I'd, I'd have called him. Hey, man, this ain't tampering. Actually, I'd have got, you know, my girlfriend or somebody like that. Hey, did you want that family job? I hear it's open. I'm just saying you should apply. Yeah, that's shit. Y'all be looking at me like Friday. Hey, the new basketball coach at Florida NM University. He's going to be introduced to the spring game. Have him and Becky over there waving to the fans. Where y'all go to church at? My whole First Baptist right there on Thomasville Road. Man, shoot. I had y'all naysayers hook, line, and sinker. Play with Keith. Huh. F Ryan to find out. I'd have y'all some. Next thing you know, dude, be recruiting, AAU, everything. I'm just saying. Play the game. We already see what's up. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, there yeah, are little people with upset about the hot dogs being sold at the game. <laughs> Did y'all want them sold? Ooh, I almost cuss. Y'all want the rattler dogs? That's why y'all, that's why you got hypertension now. Leave the rattler dogs alone. The things are salty. Things are killing you. Wanna stop it. Like, I love, I love a good hot dog as much as the next man. But a rattler dog. That's like a hypertension sandwich. Like, that thing is so salty. I'm just saying. <laughs> so, look, I'm just saying. And y'all already see a lot of basketball players going to hit the portal. 
Okay. I mean, if, if they were winning, I'd be upset. Get your ass kicked on year. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, get in the portal. It, it's okay. Like, it can't be much worse than what it was. Like, what you going to do? Win four games? Hell, that's about what you did last year. Like, if you win 10 games, it's an improvement. And that's sad. <laughs> but it's real. All right, y'all. Look, let me let y'all go. Again, Sunday, we're going to be back. We're going to look at these recruits that got offered for every baseball season. And that, look, you know, softball is going to be doing something. Maybe we have some news on the basketball hire. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I would have called him with McCollum in my office. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, you're petty. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was fun. All right, y'all. Look, for HBCU Digital Network, this is home. Home Nerd Story to Black Techies. Look, don't forget to check out my family, OG Strike Zone. Check them out. Check out Brian. Check out Kelvin. Look, check out Herb over there with HBC, HBC Nightly with the basketball spaces. Look, man, we everywhere, man. And it's always going to be fangs up. Yeah, baby, you know what time it is. Now let's get it started. Are you kidding me? Unreal. While our HBCUs are mostly known for an academic rigor, community, they also know how to turn up. Dorothy, have it.